Okay, now can you see that? Yes. Hi, everyone. We're waiting for uh, a few more people to arrive. So give me a few minutes, um, maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes. We'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, I suggest you bring yourself a nice cup of water. An example for a nice cup of water. You can bring yourself some tea if you need it for the throat, in case you need to speak in front of uh, some people for the next hour. And let's just uh, wait for um, two more minutes before we start, okay? In the meantime, I can dance. Okay, everyone, so um, let's wait one more minute. Um, let me fix the light, see how I fix the light. I do this, and I'm in the light. I do this, and I'm outside of the light. I just get back. Okay, so until we wait for the others to arrive, I just came back from Greece. I was there for my bachelor party. Uh, went there with uh, six of my best friends. Well, all of my best friends, which are six. Well, three best friends and three other guys that just, ex you know, to just arrived because they heard that Greece is fun and beautiful. So anyway, we were in this um, amazing vacation in Greece and I must tell you that Greece is amazing and you should go there, especially because the economy there is not so well uh, in the last few years. So it feels really great to support them and to the country, especially that it's almost as beautiful as Thailand. And I was in Thailand, so I must say it's really quite a great um, place to be in. But anyway, I'm telling you about Greece because I didn't put sunscreen, so I got to be a little bit more dark. And now since we're in the evening and the lighting here is not so well, I might seem really dark at some places like here. So, okay, we played enough with light. I said a few stupid things about Greece. Seems like we can start. Oh, but for the new viewers, you missed my dance. So for one more second, uh, let me do the dance again. Okay. Last thing before we start, um, there's a Q&A app inside the, um, um, inside the video. You can go there, ask questions, and also um, say, like, ask me anything that I'll be answering in the end of the webinar. But also you can respond to anything else I say, so I can see and... and um, and get some you know, engagement and see that you're alive. You didn't just open your internet and went to see the Euro um, League right now. That would be you know, not nice of you. Okay, so I'm really happy to be here. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Lior Frankel. I'm sure you do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And I'm one of the co-founders of the New School. The new school is blah, 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 blah. We'll wait for, with uh, promoting for later. 
But what I want to do today is I want to tell you all about how to get paid what you're worth. So let me try and share my screen with you. Um, Shana is here to help me with the techniques. Shana, um, can you see the presentation? No, not yet. It's, a, it's in the way. OK. Yes. OK. So let's go straight into the webinar. So once again, my name is Leo Frankel. I'm one of the co-founders at the New School. I founded it with Ron Segal and Ayal Geles. Uh, you might know these guys because they're super awesome and they help me build as many products and lessons and content that we can for you guys. Either it's for free or it's paid, it doesn't matter. We try to do our best for you guys. And this is our purpose in life right now. And other than this, we're also freelancers and we've been freelancers for some time. Um, and so this is how we learned to do what we do. And this is, well, actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about um, what we learned in the last few years. But first, let me share with you um, a little bit more about the old Lior, OK? The five years ago Lior. So the old Lior was actually clueless, OK? It was so clueless that I had no clue what to do as a freelancer, OK? I didn't even know that I'm a freelancer. I just thought that I'm a, um, you know, a web builder, web creator, web designer, call it as you wish. I didn't know that there's a name uh, to this profession that says freelance designer or freelance web programmer or whatever that I was doing. So. For sure, I didn't know there is art for how to learn uh, the business behind the freelance, OK? So let me show you a real email, a really disturbing these days for me. It's a disturbing thing to look at, but I have to email that I sent to my potential client. The first time they asked me to, um, to get a, a proposal, OK? So, Here's how it looked. His name was Dean. Uh, we're not speaking anymore, as you can guess by now, but I'll show you later why. And this was my offer. I was so excited about it that I, I wrote my offer with exclamation point, OK? And then this is how my proposal looked. It's a nice, neat email with four points. Uh, I'm promising a better version within a month final version within two months. I'm saying that the content is something for the website, not specifying which pages, just something in general. I'm saying that the total cost would be $3,000. Um, it might sound a lot for a few of you guys, but, well, you'll see very soon that it wasn't a lot at all. And the payment conditions, 30% upon signing the contract, 70% after the work is finished. What is work is finished? No one has a clue. How does that sound? Best Lior Frankel. I was so proud of myself that I sent this proposal. Well, let's not call it a proposal. I sent this email, and I was sure that um, it's going to bring me my first big and amazing project. So, this is one of the worst things that I've ever done um, as a freelance um, creative. And let me tell you why, OK? First, well, number one, proposals shouldn't be sent in an email, OK? It should be at least a nice, clean, designed PDF, not an email. Why? Because an email is not something that your client can sign on. They can all argue with you uh, that they sent you, they replied with a different email, and there was a different email and another email, and it's just not professional, and it's nothing that you can really argument about or negotiate and then clean and, and uh, make it look much, much, much better and professional. So sending it over email was a big mistake, okay? And I only discovered it um, half a year later when the project was almost ready, half a year, okay, not two months, um, 
when we started discussing what exactly was my proposal, okay? Number two is, um, I'm, I'm saying that I'm, I've given thought to everything we talked about, but I say everything and I don't really detail what we were talking about, okay? And you know how it is when you just start a project, you're so excited and you think that everything will gonna be so amazing and, and you just wanna start working on the project and when you see the down payment in your bank and you're, you just wanna do this, so no one gives a F about the details, but then a few months later, when shit hits the fan, so did we say we're gonna do this web page? We didn't say, did we talk about this logo? Did we didn't talk about the second version? And so on and so forth. So saying everything instead of detailing what we were exactly talking about, that was a huge mistake, okay? Um, number three uh, was the fact that I said what this proposal does not include, okay? It does not include QA does not include moving the content from the old website. But well, I never said what is the price of those, okay? So when I uh, had to do them, otherwise the website wouldn't be ready, uh, it was a really, really hard negotiation for me at this part. Okay, uh, a few more examples for the huge mistakes. Probably I can count 12 here, but four, five, and six is I thought it's gonna take one or two months. I thought it's gonna cover general pages and I thought it's gonna uh, worth three thousand dollars well um, that was a real nightmare okay and I must say this was a real real nightmare okay I, I, I really needed you to see me it was a nightmare after two months I was like this wait like this oh my god what is going on, okay? Nothing was ready, okay? And it's not just because I had no clue what to do, it's because I had no clue that you really need to know how to manage projects. And I didn't know what are timelines. And I didn't know what, it, what is, um, you know, how to price my stuff. And, and I didn't know anything, okay? Actually, I wasn't paid well. I literally, lost money. I was paid pennies for what I gave, okay? Now, I cannot blame the client, okay? Maybe the client wasn't the, the, the nicest person on earth, but they are not to be blamed because I gave them this price and I promised them a website for this price, okay? Why did I lose so much money? Because I worked much harder than I ever thought I would, okay? This is a nice graph about how much I thought it would take me two months, but actually it took me six months, okay? Because I didn't know how to arrange my stuff and how to uh, price my project again. And it all ended up really, really poorly between me and the client. Again, with the project, I felt like they don't pay me enough. And then when they asked me for this change and that change, you know, those clients were like, oh, let's just do this. Oh, I have this idea for a nice feature. Because I wrote on my proposal, let's do new pages in general let's do this blah blah pages and I wasn't detailed enough, they could just ask me for whatever they wanted because they didn't include the number of revisions allowed for this project. They could ask me for whatever they wanted. So I had to argue with them all the time, like let's stop doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. It's too many changes. I can't do it, blah, 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 blah. It ended quite poorly. And I must say this client, well, as you can guess, the first client you have a lot of the times is someone you know or someone who's a friend of you, okay? Someone is a friend of yours. Well, this guy, let me tell you something. They could be with me in Greece this year in my bachelor party, okay? And they weren't there because we just never became, never got back to be the friends we were after this project. Again, not to blame them because they, they built two websites their whole life. I'm supposed to be the professional who build websites, so I'm supposed to be the one who knows how long or um, how much time it should take. Okay, so let's see what I learned, okay? First of all, I, I learned that I need to charge more, much more, because $3,000 is nice, but it's not enough to live with for six months, okay? At least not in Tel Aviv. I don't know if you're watching me from a different country, 
and you think it's cool and you think that it's like three thousand dollars a lot well it's good for you and i wish you guys luck and wish you the best and you can go on and ask for three thousand dollars for even a year but in tel aviv this is not enough to pay the rent and buy some food and nice clothes and you know just stay clean i needed to charge much much more number two is I need to learn how to negotiate better, okay? Um, negotiate on the number of revisions, the amount of changes I'm allowing on my projects, um, negotiate prices, negotiate how many web pages uh, will be there or will not be there. And of course, web pages, uh, the, the building a website is just an example here. It can be, it's the same whether you do branding or logo design, not just for web design. Number three is, I need to increase my value, okay? Because I cannot just ask my client for $30,000 for a project worth $10,000, right? I need to increase my value. And as, as soon as I learn how to increase my value, then I will know how to charge more and I will give more to my potential client. So I understood that I need a transformation, okay? now. Let's stay clear here, okay? I don't want to be a liar. It's not like it happened to me in one night. Truth is, it took me five years. This transformation took me five years. It took me uh, more than, I think, now it's like 30, 35 clients. Uh, it took me a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. It took me a lot of projects that were not priced well. It took me tons of... Um, um, lessons learned how to speak with clients and how to negotiate better and how to price my project it took me at least two years until i realized that i really have to learn the business behind freelance because again i thought i'm just a creative i didn't think i'm a businessman i didn't think i know how to you know calculate my my rent and to do the accounting and blah 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 all this shit that you don't want to do when you are um um uh, when you're a creative. So what happened is that after a few years, I finally learned that I need to do a transformation. And since that moment, I only taught myself, I read everything I could, I watched everything I could on the internet, went to um, uh, workshops and, and, and learned about business and learned about the freelance life whatever I could, just in order to know how to freelance. And guess what? It worked so well that eventually I became a really, mm, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna show off. So I'll just say a good freelancer, okay? I got to the point where I can do freelance work only two days a week and on the other three days build the new school, okay? The new school is now two years old we built it for a long time. Uh, we spent so much time in it. And uh, as you might know, we also make some money from the new school, but it was never the, the whole purpose. The whole purpose was to help other freelance creatives just like ourselves. And the fact is that it took us a long time before we saw the first dollar from this uh, business of the new school. Our mission in life was to say, hey, creative freelancers, We've been there, we've uh, wasted so much blood, sweat, and tears on the wrong clients, on wrong pricing, on wrong projects. We didn't know how to get what we're worth, and we're here to help you guys do it as you wish. Okay? Um, if you want, you can write me in the Q&A, for example, from which city you are. It will be really nice to see here a few of your names and the, the cities you're from. Um, so as I said, I, I can start. I'm from Tel Aviv. Let's see if s someone here wants to uh, share where he's from. Okay, I'll wait with it and continue with my uh, slides. So, okay, spoke a lot about myself and my journey, and now let's speak about you. So there's a few myths that there, there are a few myths that, um, um, wait a second, I feel like I wanna know you better. So, hi, 
Um, there are a few myths that I hear about all the time. These are like mythologists about the, the, the amazing talented artist, about this amazing designer that if I'm not going to be someone else is um, going to be and I would not be able to um, ask for what I'm worth. I want to speak to you about this myth, okay, and what's behind them, okay? Just before, let's say hello to Thomas from Belgium and Anastasia from uh, Washington, D.C., uh, U.S., we're with you, and we pray for the guys from Orlando. I hope they'll be fine. Um, and Marta from Poland. Hey, May from Ohio. Uh, Kagdas, how are you, man? You're always with us. I love you, man. I love you. Kagdas is our friend from Istanbul. Um, he's a long, long time uh, new school student and we'll love him. Darlene from Denver and um, Karen from Panama City, Panama. Wow, I've been to Panama 10 years ago. Your islands are the best. I, I took a diving lessons there. Okay, cut off with this. Let's get back to the webinar. So I want to tell you about three myths, okay, that a lot of you guys are afraid of, but actually I call bullshit, okay? I call bullshit. So here's our, here are the, the, the myths I'm talking about. Number one, I need to be the most talented creative on earth, okay, in order to charge what I'm worth or in order to charge a lot. This is bullshit. Let me tell you something. I know a lot of really talented creatives on earth that don't, can't even pay the rent just because they're assholes. And I know a lot of creatives which are not that talented, like myself, and can get paid really well. You know why? Because I do things on time. Okay, not five years ago, but these days. And I do whatever I promise I would do. And I bring a lot of value to my clients, so I don't have to be the most talented creative on earth. Well, I wish I was born with the same genes like Picasso, but I wasn't, okay? And still, I get amazing clients that pay me really well and let me live the life that I want, okay? So you don't have to be this um, a most amazing, talented, talented creative just because you can do it without if you know if people like you and they trust you and they 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 really uh, feel that they can work with you let me ask you this three questions one are you curious about your clients business do you care about what they're doing for example if if uh, an ice cream uh, uh, calling from Paris sorry I forgot you and Natalia from Costa Rica and Raymond from Toronto oh my god everyone is here so are you curious about your client business? Yeah, Thomas, are you curious about your client's business? When an ice cream shop uh, 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 business person comes to you and say, hey, can you build a website or can you design the brand for my ice cream shop? Do you really care about their business? Yes? Okay, can you learn new skills? Or is university was the last time that you ever cared about learning something new? Can you learn new skills? Can you? And the third question is, are you able to be humble, kind, and giving? Really? Can you be humble, kind, and giving to people? Well, if you answer the yes to two or three of them, let me tell you, you can get paid really well, okay? These are the three answers that I say yes about every day when I work with my clients, and believe me, it's enough. I'm curious about their businesses, I learn new skills, and the last thing is I'm able to be humble, kind, and giving. Okay, so myth number two, okay? I need to, be, to manipulate my clients and be salesy, okay? So people think that if you can manipulate your clients and you, and you are salesy, you can earn more money. I call bullshit again, okay? Why? Because people have bullshit radar. And if you just try to be salesy, but you, there's nothing behind your uh, promises, they will feel it, okay? It's not 1950 anymore. It's not these days when salesmen in America would 
knock on the door of, of this, uh, or, you know, like in Mad Men, and sell them uh, a fridge that they don't need because they already bought a fridge two years ago. It's not these days anymore. People have bullshit traders, and if you cannot do what you promise, they smell it. So no, you don't need to manipulate your clients, and you don't need to be salesy. You need to be able to explain your value, okay? And we're gonna speak about it. You need to understand what you're worth, you need to understand the value you bring to your clients, and then you need to know how to increase it and to explain it to them. We're gonna go over it in a second. Myth number three, increasing my rates will make my clients sad or angry or fire me. Bullshit, okay, bullshit again. Veronica from Caracas, Venezuela, and Don from Philadelphia, I have to ask you as well, do you think that increasing your rates will make your clients sad or angry or fire you? No. How do I know? Because I do it every project. Okay, in the last webinar, one of the questions was, when is the best time to increase your rates? My answer is, and you'll be able to see it because tonight or tomorrow, we're gonna uh, publish the Q&A from the last webinar, so there's a lot of questions and ask answers about this webinar, and you'll be able to see a lot of more information. Of course, it's, it's for free on our blog, when do you increase your rates? Every fucking project. Why? Because if you keep learning new skills every time you work and you keep gaining more experience, you should increase your rates every project because your value is worth more. Okay, so let me tell you this. When your clients understand your value, they are happy to give you their money, okay? And I'm gonna show you very soon a real example from a month ago of a client that I won. I'm gonna show you everything, including the prices that I gave, you, I gave them, the, the pricing, uh, pricing packages that I presented to them, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what's next on the webinar? Let's speak about three strategies for increasing your rates, for uh, uh, asking what you're worth, however you call it. Strategy number one, understand your client's business. Strategy number two, increase your value. And strategy number three, offer more than you were asked. Okay, these are the three strategies. They are very simple. I'm gonna explain what's behind them, okay? It's, it's not as uh, um, complicated as you'd think. And if you get it, you can charge more. Not tomorrow morning, but as soon as you, mm -mm -mm, I'm gonna tell you why, okay. so. We're gonna be using a real example from a project I won lately. Specifically, I won it one day before the last webinar, so it's, I think it's exactly a month ago or something. Um, strategy number one, understand your client's business. What are we talking about? Let's speak about what is value for a second, okay? So you see two jeans here, right? On the left and on the right. Can you guess how much these jeans worth? Um, you can try and answer the Q&A and tell me what you think these jeans worth, okay? Until you answer, I'm gonna tell you the, uh, I'm gonna tell you the real answer, okay? The left one cost 14 bucks. The right one cost 140 bucks, okay? Why this one is 10x more than the left one? Do you have a clue? just because this one is diesel and this one is Asos, Asos, okay? Both were made in China. Both were made maybe even in the same factory. One worth more, one worth less. Let's look at another example. Two logos, super, super uh, similar. Orange, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if you know, Orange is like one of the biggest cellular networks uh, uh, brands in the world. On the right side, Blue Rubicon, okay? Left one cost over $100,000, okay? The designer got that much, actually a design agency. Uh, right one, I guess around $1,000. 100 times more left one than the right one. Why? Simple answer, because of the volume, okay? When you're this huge brand, okay, your logo means a lot to you. If you have a really good logo, you're willing to pay a lot for it. If you're a small company, a small agency that no one really knows, you're not willing to pay a lot because the value of the logo 
is not that big for you, okay? It's a matter of value. Here, the difference between the jeans is because when you have a diesel, people are willing to pay for diesel 10 times more because it brings them 10 times more value. Doesn't matter that I think it's a stupid value, it's just like, uh, oh, look at me, I have uh, diesel jeans, but let's, let's keep my uh, criticism here outside of the webinar because it has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the fact that people value diesel 10 times more. So they are willing to pay for a jeans that looks almost the same 10 times more, produced in the same country, almost in the same factory, maybe even in the same factory 10 times more. Okay, and it reminds me a really, really good story that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm um, uh, about Picasso. So here's the, the nice story about Picasso. So Picasso is uh, sitting on a bench, of course in Paris. I don't know it's a story, maybe he was in London, but probably he sat down in, on a bench in, in Paris. And then this, this uh, woman comes to him and, and she's like, hey, Picasso, oh, it's so nice to meet you, Picasso. But um, of course, imagine it's in, in French. I don't know French. We have someone from Paris here, so maybe uh, Colin. So maybe Colin knows how to uh, say it in French. But uh, Picasso, uh, de, 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 Picasso. Sorry for my uh, <laughs> French joke. Maybe it's not funny. Uh, and she's like, can you paint me? And Picasso is like, sure. So he sits and he's like sketching it. Five minutes, it's ready. She's like, oh my God, Picasso, this is so amazing. Thank you for picturing me and uh, so amazing. How much do I owe you? And Picasso is like, 5,000 bucks, lady. She's like, what? It took you five minutes. And he's like, mm, no. It took me 80 years to earn the experience to be able to um, picture you in five minutes. So that worth five tons of dollars okay and what is the lesson from this amazing story the lesson from this um amazing story is that it's not about the thing that you do okay it's not about the word logo there shouldn't be a price for log a logo and there shouldn't be a price for this amount of hours for every designer it's not about the hours and it's not about the specific thing, it's about the value, okay? And if, it, if, if a work of 5,000 hours take you five minutes, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get paid for 5,000 hours, okay? If your experience is that amazing. So in order to, to understand your value, you have to understand your, um, your customer's business, okay? So you have to, to think, what actually, what actually, oh, sorry, <laughs> Colin from Paris says it was 1,000. Okay, sorry, 10,000. I didn't know the, the story. I'll fix it for next time. It's not 5,000, $10,000. Um, so in, in order to understand your value, think, what do you really do for your client? Do you help them get more clients? Yeah. Do, do these clients worth them? Do you elevate their brand? How much, how much is the value of this? Do you save them time and energy? Yeah, maybe, you know what? Maybe your clients could go to Wix and choose a template, okay? Maybe they don't need a web designer, but are they really know how to do it? Do you save them time and energy? And do you help them focus on what they know how to do while you can do the design work for them? So you must understand your value. You do so much for your clients, you get them you get their business more clients, you elevate their brand, you save them time and energy, you help them focus. There's so much in your work and you have to really believe in it and really understand it first so you don't feel like a fraud and second so you can explain it to your clients, okay? Let's speak about the real example that happened to me around a month ago, okay? I met this new client, Roberto. It's a long story how we know each other, but we know each other from somewhere. And then he's 65 years old. He has worked with freelancers before, so I can't just come up with numbers without him trying to compare it to things he know. Uh, he wants a new content website, okay? He wants like this kind of multi-blog where there are uh, like, you know, Huffington Post, but smaller, so there's a lot of uh, authors, etc. He has a very vague idea about what he wants, okay? 
watch out. Having a very vague idea about what you want is sometimes um, a warning for a really bad client because if a client doesn't know exactly what they want, they can get you very confused. But it's also an opportunity for you because if I can help Roberto understand what exactly is that he wants to work on, okay, and if I spend time with him working on the specific things that he would like to have, it means that I already bring him that much value, okay? He already wants to work with me and he already feels that um, I value a lot to him, okay? Last thing, it's a nonprofit. Sometimes we feel like nonprofits can't pay a lot. I say, well, it depends who you talk to. Okay, what value can I provide Roberto? Tons, okay? I can help him focus his idea. I can advise him which platform to use. Should he use WordPress or Squarespace or, or uh, uh, whatever for the uh, multi-blog platform? I can set up his newsletter. Uh, you probably know me from the uh, New School newsletter, which means that I know how to set up a newsletter. By the way, be before the New School, I didn't know how to set up a newsletter, so I didn't offer these services, but I, now I do, so I offer these services to my clients. I offer them to set up their newsletter. Uh, I can help him with the design, of course, and so on and so forth. So before I'm even sitting on uh, an offer, to Roberto, I think, what can I really help him with? Where can I bring him more and more value, okay? So the whole concept is help them solve their problems and they will happily pay you more, okay? So a lot of the times, a client comes to you and they say, I need a logo or I need a website or I need a t-shirt or I need a poster or I need a stationery or I need a branding or whatever. This is not what they really need. What they really need is more clients to their business, more money, more conversions, uh, brand awareness, whatever. It's not the thing that they ask you to do, it's what's behind it. As the more you understand what's behind what they ask you, the more you understand their problems, you can solve more of their problems and they are willing to pay you more happily. Okay, cool. Now, uh, number two, second strategy, increase your value. So there's so many ways uh, to increase your value, but the easiest one is, of course, to learn new skills. Guys and girls, the year is 2016. You have to learn new skills every week, okay? Maybe not every day, but every week. And I'm not just speaking about uh, moving from Photoshop to Sketch. Learn new skills learn how to do marketing, learn how to, uh, uh, to do videos, learn how to write, learn how to record, learn how to, I don't know, whatever skill you, 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 you think you might like, go and grab it, okay? The more skills you have, the more services you can offer, the more value you have, okay? Now, I ask you to do the following. Please take a pen and paper, okay? Let's do this together. Just take a pen and paper and do me a favor just because I love you so much and maybe you love me back, maybe not. I know Cagdas loves me because I always see here, here and on my email and then in Skype, but the other guys, maybe you like me, maybe not. Just do me this favor. Take a pen and paper and write down one skill that you would like um, to learn very soon. Write it down, okay? Okay, now take this paper, take it off your notebook and put it somewhere on your desk. Okay, Shana, what did Shana write? Shana wrote design WordPress websites. Okay, this is what Shana wants to do. I wanna do this, video production. I actually started learning it very lately but I still suck at it. So I want to learn how to do it better. You know why I want to learn video production? Because my co-founder, Ron Segal, maybe you know him from his vlog, he knows how to edit videos. He knows how to do it really well. And guess what he offers his client when they ask him for a project? 
hmm, do you need a video? Yes, of course we need a video. Hmm, guess who can make a video for you? Hmm, that's me, Ron Segal. Can you give me more money? Yes, please. Oh, everyone is happy. So, yes, I want to know how to do video productions. And wanna, I want to know how to do everything. I want to know how to do every skill you can think of just because when you do this, you can offer more things, okay? So, let's get, let's get back to strategy number uh, two together with strategy number one. New skills with understanding your client's business means there's more value to offer, okay? Which brings us to strategy number three, which is the three packages technique, okay? My favorite technique that brought me from um, being a so-so uh, freelancer to uh, earning really good money freelancer. Okay, what am I talking about? If you have no clue, I feel really bad. It means that you didn't read a lot of my blog posts. No, I'm kidding. It's not like I'm feeling bad. Maybe you're new here at the new school, but if not, you're gonna hear a lot about it from me and my friends and in our newsletter, in our blog post, because this is one of the most important thing we do at the new school, okay? What's standing behind it is exactly what I told you before. Someone says, please, can you make me a logo? And I say, okay, but can you tell me why you need it for? And when they tell me why they need it for, I understand that it's not just a logo that they need. They might need many more things. And if they trust me, if they like me, if they want to give me money, they are happy for me to offer them more things. Why? Because it takes you so long to find a freelancer that you can count on that until they found one, they are willing to give me more. But I have to offer them more, okay? So what do I do? I give them three packages, okay? Watch me out, learn this basic thing. It's the basis for you to get more money. And excuse me if I sound like a salesy person or whatever, it's just me want you to earn more, okay? I hope it's fine. Um, here is a nice example, not a real example, it's just a nice example for three packages, okay? Bronze package, silver package, golden package, what do we speak about? Let's say a client wanted you to make him a website. So bronze package means I'll make you three pages. But on the silver package, I say, hey, can I also design customized icons for you? And on the golden package, I say, hey, hmm, if this website is all about cat's pajamas, maybe you'd like me to picture some of the cats wearing the pajamas. Maybe you'd like me to open an Etsy store in addition to this website. Maybe you want me to design a newsletter for the store fans, okay? And of course, it costs more than twice than the first package because I offer so much more value. And of course, I have more work, okay? It's not like I'm lying to anyone. It just means that from the same client, I'm gonna make more money and it's fine because anyway, again, it takes a long time to make someone count on you. So if they're already willing to work with you, they'll be happy for you to offer them more. Okay, now, can you guess how many times people are uh, choosing number one, number two, and number three? Maybe you can guess, maybe not. I'm gonna tell you anyway, <laughs> because this is who I am, okay? I'm just telling the answers. This is, this is what I'm here for, telling you everything I know. So, no one ever, ever, ever took number one, okay? Around 40 to 60% took number two, and the, the rest of them took number three. So it's like 50-50. Most people th tell me, from uh, uh, since they uh, uh, use this uh, technique that I teach, that clients are going for package number two, but in my case, now it goes for 50-50, with the last clients always picking up number three, which means that I learned something about how to build the packages, meaning that, I don't know, I know how to play with the numbers or whatever. Anyway, let's see what I've done exactly with our Roberto. And again, not manipulations, not saying bullshit. Roberto 
said he has no problem for me to use this example at the new school. How nice he is and how nice it is to be honest and authentic. So this is a real, um, this is a real um, shooting from the PDF that I sent Roberto, okay? Uh, Roberto, I, I'm, I'm um, reminding you that he wants a multi-blog platform, okay, like HuffPo. So the basic package includes basic logo and fonts and design, content management, seven templates for pages, design for mobile and tablet, test and apply to browser, host, hosting and domain, training to his web admin, basic analytics, and English-only website, okay? And this is how much it costs. Um, and then I also offered him growth package, which means just the same, but it's not just English, it's Hebrew and English, okay? And guess what? He said, yeah, of course I want a version in Hebrew. And I said, well, of course I want to build it for you. Uh, email system and training uh, to the guy who will be uh, running the, the newsletter system. By the way, one of the ways to get more and more uh, work is to offer your clients to also do the emails, not just setting it up, but also write and design the emails forever, okay? Like build a retainer with them and design a Facebook page for him. And the high-end package includes also advanced analytics, a cover page, and audio elements where I uh, hire someone to read a few of the blog posts. Roberto was really happy to go for package number three. And guess what? When we were sitting, remember I, I um, told him that um, I will help, I told you that I will help him to focus on how to build uh, the project. So what happened was that um, we sat on it, okay, it was almost a month ago. We sat on it, I showed him the packages. He was like, mm, but why do I need this? Okay, I want this, mm, but why do I need this? I want this, and then he said, can I mix and match uh, two of those things between package two and three? And I'm like, sure, because I don't mind, it's separate items. And then he said, mm, you know what? I'm a nonprofit, so I also need a PayPal button for donations. Can you do this? Ding! And then I said, but how will people know that they can donate? Do you want me to add a, a banners that pop up from the bottom that offer them to donate. And he's like, yes, ding, and so on and so forth. So the whole concept is for me, not just to take what he's saying and say, okay, client, I'm gonna do this client, but it is to understand what's the logic behind how Roberto thinks and, and what's the business he's trying to build with this nonprofit, uh, not a business, a nonprofit, but whatever. And the fact that he needs people to donate, otherwise the nonprofit will die. So he needs this PayPal button and he needs those banners, etc. cetera. Um, and then what happens is that he was very happy for me to um, get him a different proposal with uh, package number four, Lucky B. Okay, it's not lucky, it's actually a lot of practice, okay? Maybe it's not gonna take you a week, maybe not a month, but a year from now, if you use these techniques, you can be exactly, you can do exactly the same, believe me. It takes half a year, a year to practice this whole package thing and all, but it works. Okay, so here's the nice thing. I do this whole project based on a different one I've already created, okay? I have a very similar website that I already created, but I, uh, unfortunately, I cannot use because a client canceled the project in the middle of it. So I got paid just for half. I asked Roberto if he cares that I use the same. He said, no. I gave him a little discount in order to uh, work on this uh, different project. And it means that I have half the work than doing it all over again. So this is just, Amazing. Again, it's not like a magic formula. It's not like tomorrow morning your life going to change. But if you stick to these strategies that I showed you, you can do so much better um, in a few months' time. Okay. Hey, Court. The party has now arrived. <laughs> Hello, Court. Court is also a, a all-time new schooler. We love you, man. So, okay. Let's go over it again. Strategy number one. Understand your client's business. 
Strategy number two, increase your volume. You remember how? The easiest part, learn new skills, okay? Learn how to set up a newsletter for your, web, for, for your client. And if you set up a, a, almost every business these days is trying to set up a newsletter. Can you set up it for your client? Can you design it for your client? Can you even write the copy for your client? Maybe you can. I don't know what your talent is, and you don't know until you try. So try and learn new skills, and you'll be, off, be able to offer so much more value. How do you uh, offer all that value? With the three packages, okay? So in other words, doing these strategies is not just getting paid what you're worth. It also means that you're raising your rates, okay? Now, let me ask you this, and if you're still here, and mm, I can see that you're still here. So when you're still here, please answer me this one question. Why? Why do you want to raise your rates? Okay, let me give you a few examples. Do you want more free time? Do you want better clients? Do you want to be able to pay debt and start a family? Do you want to work on something of your own, like I'm working on the new school because I have to do freelance only two days a week, not even two days, okay? I work on the new school for three and a half days. Why, why, why do you want to uh, uh, raise your rates, okay? Let's see if we get some answers here. Okay, Shayna is answering. I want to raise my rates because I want to spend more time writing my book. Good for you, Shayna. I'm writing a new one, by the way, but it's in Hebrew. So, uh, hey, Ray from Toronto. I totally missed you. Natalia from Costa Rica. Do you have a... Um, do you have someone who wrote it? Constantly learning. Okay, I can't see it. So, okay, court says so that I can quit my day job and work less. Okay, good for you, court. So, let's see. Um, this is my specific answer. Okay, I wanted to raise my rates because I wanted to do freelance work only two days a week. Okay, I had a dream. Uh, I had a startup before actually where I worked five days a week on the startup. Uh, it went on for three years. On the last year, we had zero payment because the money from the investors was gone. So we only paid the uh, programmers. One of them, by the way, was Ayal Geles, one of my co-founders at the new school. But it meant that for one year, I worked five days a week without getting paid. And this is actually the true story of how I started do freelancing, okay? But then freelance went so well, and the startup didn't go well at all in the end of it. So I went 100% freelance. Uh, again, this was like five, four year, uh, years ago. And then I wanted to do freelance only two days a week. So in the other three days, I can build a new startup, this time without investors. So I'm not dependent on anyone else. Okay, so um, Colin is writing, I want to raise my rate so I can retire at 50. Wow, wow, this is brilliant, Colin. I really hope that you will retire at 50 and I really hope that you're paying uh, enough attention for savings because these days people don't know how to save money. Okay, also Marta, I want to create value for my own and work remote. Cool. Um, who else did I see here? Don't write, more financial independence. For sure, for sure. Okay. Sean is writing to, to stay in business. Well, you're right. Uh, sometimes, and this is exactly what I want to speak about uh, in, in the uh, few minutes that we have left. This is what happened to me, okay? What happened to me was that within five years, I went from being a freelancer with $20 per hour to a freelancer who can earn $150 to $200 per hour. For some of you, it looks a lot. For some of you, it looks not so much, but in Tel Aviv, it's quite, it's really nice, okay? Let's just say it's really nice. 
And again, it's enough for me to work only two days a week. Now just think what happens if you raise your rates only by 10%, okay? If you take the three strategies that I taught you in this webinar, and the webinar will live on forever and ever, at least until YouTube is live, so you can watch it all over again, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, just to re remind yourself the strategies. So raising your rates by only 10% means that you get $560 more per month, and raising it by 50% will get you that much, what happens if you raise your rate by 100%? You can guess. So you can see that I raise my rates from $20 to $150, which is hundreds of percents. And just by learning all this stupid business stuff that I didn't want to learn at all because I wanted to be a creative, but then I figure out that business can be nice, so I learned how to do business, and I understood that I'm a businessman and not just a creative freelancer. And then I raised my rate, and then you can get more and more per month, okay? How can you achieve this goal? So you have two options, and I'm so happy that Court and Kagdas, that are long, long ago uh, new school students, sorry, I took some water, are here with us. Option number one, you can keep trying to learn everything by yourself, okay? You can do this and you can try and, 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 and do it exactly like I did it, okay? Problem is, it takes you 10 times longer, okay? It took me five years. It takes, for a few of my friends, 10 years and they still didn't figure it out, okay? Problem number two is, and I see it with a lot of young freelancers, you might get discouraged and just give up, okay? You might say, you know what, this freelance shit is not for me. I go back to my cubicle, I hated it, but I just wanna get back to the cubicle and, you know, work nine to five, don't worry about money, don't worry about clients, and you know what? Maybe, that's it. Maybe this is what it is for you, and it's totally fun. But I want to suggest something else for you. And excuse me, really excuse me if I'm going to sound a little bit promotional here, but this is just because I really believe in what I'm saying. And I want to say that you can let the new school help you figure it out, okay? I'm going to talk now uh, for one and a half minutes about our course. And again, going to be promotional, but just like we talked about for the whole webinar, I am not afraid to be promotional because I know how much value I can bring you, okay? So I hope you're good with it. So how can we help you? Well, you can go to our uh, website, you can read so many case studies, you can hear about Margaret from Paris that now she earns double of what she, uh, she wants, and she got it, okay? You know what happened to Margaret? She was just too afraid to ask for uh, what she's worth. She didn't know how to write the proposal, but she knew that she was worth more. And just changing the proposal, changing how to, she wrote the proposal and how she explains it to her clients made everything better for her. And Tara from Pittsburgh, which is also a long, long time uh, um, new school student, says that she learned how to listen to the client, okay? Remember I told you that number one strategy is to learn about their business. So Tara learned how to uh, um, learn about your client's business. Corinne from Tel Aviv, uh, she makes a lot more money, and I know this for sure because I know her and her husband, they have a really cute design shop called designme.co.il. Sorry, it's not, a, it's not an advertising because none of you is a potential client, but I send her clients, I see her uh, in creative mornings every, every um, last Thursday of the month. I know they're happy. I know they're making more. She's our uh, uh, student from day one, and I'm so happy she's with us. And these guys said these nice words about the pricing class. Okay, so what is the pricing class? Let's do it in one minute. The pricing class is, is a package of the best things that we imagined can, we can help you guys solve these problems, okay? We thought, how can we take everything that took us, myself, five years 
Ron started to be, to be a freelancer when he was 16, so for him, uh, 20 years. And how, how can we take all this wisdom and make it as easy to digest and as fun and smart and uh, productive and effective for you guys? And we sat down for a many months and built what we thought would be the best thing, okay? It's not just online classes, it's a lot more. Um, but the, the, the base of it is the, these five classes, okay? It's only two and a half, three hours of video, so you can watch it in one sitting, and then you can watch it again and again and again and again and again and again. And this is what it covers, how to understand the design market and how to determine your rates, that if you don't take them, you just lose money, how to price projects right, how to negotiate pricing with clients, and how to write sexy proposals with these uh, three pricing packages um, that are really good for you, and I prove it again and again in every project I do. And I have now examples that Tara sent me, and that Kagda sent me, he's here, and other people who sent me, and I see that they use our packages, and I'm so proud of them, okay? Um, so as I said, it's not just lessons, they're online tools, and there are docs and templates, so you can, you can just, you know, there's a questionnaire that you can ask your client to help you understand his business better. Um, there's a step-by-step -step guide to help you go from A to Z. Uh, there is mentor support, so if you ask us questions, we are always available for you, and I hope, like, I don't know if you can chat here in the Q&A, but you can ask Kavdas and Kord that are here. We are very open for questions, and we always there to ask, uh, to help. There's lifetime access, um, you can watch it from your mobile or your desktop. You can watch it from the bus, from the office, from the toilet, wherever you want. Um, plus, there's our private community that you are really, really welcome to join. Uh, Simon here is saying a massive thanks. A year after he started, he increased his rates by 20%, and he had this uh, this he had 20% more profits. What if it doesn't work for you? We'll give you your money back. We had hundreds and hundreds of students until today. I'm so proud, and it was right um, on the last webinar, and it's right today. Only two people asked for their money back. And you know what? No questions asked. This is what we promised, and this is what we've done. You want your money back? We were like, okay, no worries. Um, so no need to speak about this. It can be even one year later, okay? It's not like this kind of 30 days for money back guarantee. You can get it if one year later you say, hey, it was shit, it didn't help me raise my rates in one dollar. We are happy to give you your money back because we didn't give you value. And if you got me till this point, you understand that when I don't give value, I don't want your money. I want to bring you more value than you can actually uh, imagine. So last thing is, because you were so cool to survive this webinar with me till now, there's a special offer. You can get it for $197, $197 instead of $297. 33% off. It's in bit.ly slash new webinar, uh, bit.ly slash new webinar. And guys, I want to tell you something, okay? The, 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 the things that I'm talking about. Look at me, Lior from Tel Aviv. Five years ago, I would never think that I would be able to be in front of video, speak to people and say, hey, buy my course, buy my course. And you know what? Because I thought it would be salesy, I thought it would be manipulative, I thought it would be, hey, why do you speak about money? Why are you a salesperson? You're supposed to be an artist, you're supposed to be a creative. You know what, guys? It's okay to speak about money, okay? This is one of the things that I learned and one of the things that I wanna give you. It's okay to speak about money and I feel good asking for money for this course because I think it's really great and if you don't like it, I give you your money back. So enough with this and let's finish this webinar. Guys, super thank you for being here with us. I'm really, really happy I was here with you. It's exactly one hour, so it's like we promised. 
uh, just like we said with the client, in order for them to like and trust you, be on time, uh, uh, give what you promise, okay? I hope that I, I gave you what I promised. I gave you all the strategies. We have time for just one question. Um, so I remind you that we'll have a whole blog post with a lot of Q&A uh, from the last webinar. So we already have like, I don't know, 11 or 12 or 15 questions answered. Um, and then we have one question just before, oh, Court, this is so nice of you. Ah. He says, Court says, after taking the new school class, my next project, I made 300% more than ever before. Hey, man, should have told me this. I didn't know. 300%. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Court will love you. Um, so one question by Vivian Liesel. How do you get the right clients with acquisition? Oops, where it is. I see the way you negotiate your rates, which is awesome, but how do you attain the internet of these clients in the first way? Thank you for your time to do this. Okay, Vivian. So it's like one word, so I hope your name is Vivian. So here's the thing. Um, I'll do it in a nutshell. It doesn't happen you know, it doesn't happen in a night. It doesn't happen in one day. It happens after a few months or a few years of work. What you have to remember is that people have to know, like, and trust you, okay? Know you, they have to hear about you. You heard about me because I have a blog. Do you have a blog? You maybe heard of me because I have a Facebook page. Do you have a Facebook page? Do you do something so more people will know about you? This number one, like you. Are you likable? Uh, um, um, do you go to do some networking? Are you trying to, to uh, be really helpful for people? Are you trying to give free value before you're asking for someone like, I'm giving all this free value and maybe none of you will buy our course and I don't give it them because at least I know that I help uh, the, the many people who arrive to this webinar. Are you likable? And the third thing is, can you be trusted? Do you do your projects on time? Do you deliver what you said you would deliver? And so on. So if people know, like, and trust you, they will bring you the next, next client, okay? Now what happens is that the more you do it, the more opportunities you get. Within these opportunities, you should get the more expensive clients, okay? And what happens is that within time, you climb the stairs and get more and more expensive clients and less and less cheap stakes, okay? The people who want a logo and Fiverr, just send them to Fiverr, okay? Let them buy something on Fiverr. For us, um, there's like no need for, for uh, uh, getting these clients. We want these clients that even though they have a nonprofit, they are willing to pay thousands and tens of thousands of dollars as designers. These people are out there, so aim for uh, the big ones and work on your, um, you know, not on your portfolio, on your personality and on your customer service. And whenever you, you talk with your customers, think what will they tell their friends about you, okay? What will they tell your future potential customers about you? Because if they're gonna tell them good things, you can get their clients, uh, their friends, as your next clients and charge more because now you have more experience and hopefully you have more skills just like we taught in the webinar. So guys, thank you so much. I just, oh, last thing. Uh, wow, Douglas is so cute. Thank you, man. Okay, he says, hey guys, don't forget to follow New School Blog and subscribe to their newsletter. There's much, much more helpful content in there. Thank you, you're right. We're putting so much time and so much effort in creating as much value as we can for you guys. And we just love you and you are the purpose of our life. And for every email that I get, you know, when I get up at sometimes 6 a.m. and when I watch my emails and then I see this email of a guy sometimes from Chicago, sometimes from India, some from, like the last one was from the Caribbeans, and they say, hey man, I read your blog post, it was awesome, my next project was better, or I charge more, 
or now I know how to manage my time or whatever, it makes my day. So thank you. You're literally make my life better just by being. So thank you very much. And thanks everyone here like Anastasia and Dawn and, and, and Vivian and Court and Marta and, and, and Sean and Colin and, and Veronica and, and, and Karen and Darlene and Natalie Raymond and Tom and Maylee and the other people who I couldn't find their names. Love you guys. Ciao.